हेलो फ्रेंड कैसे हो आप लोग टुडे वी विल लर्न अबाउट वेब डेवलपमेंट कोर्स सी एस एस इफ़ यू आर अवेयर वेन वी आर डेवलपिंग अ वेबसाइट सी एस एस इज़ द बेस्ट पार्ट विच वी नो एवर सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग दिस वीडियो आई वुड लाइक यू रिक्वेस्ट एवरी वन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल एंड शेयर विथ योर फ्रेंड्स हु नीड दिस कोर्स वन मोर थिंग If you want other course like DevOps, HTML, Salesforce, you just go to my playlist and learn from that. Without wasting time, just now we have to start this course. So let's start this course. Thank you. Have you ever wondered how websites get their stylish looks? The answer lies in a technology called CSS. But what exactly is CSS, and what does it do? Let's delve into it. CSS or cascading style sheets is like the sartorial sense of the web. It's a language used to describe how a document written in HTML, the structure of web content, is presented. CSS breathes life into the otherwise plain HTML, coloring the web world with its rich palette of properties. Imagine HTML as the skeleton of a web page. CSS is the skin and clothing that gives shape, color, and personality to that skeleton. It takes care of everything from typography, colors, layout to animations, turning a series of HTML tags into a beautiful web page. CSS and HTML work in tandem, like two peas in a pod. HTML lays the groundwork, and CSS swoops in to jazz things up. With CSS. Web developers can turn plain HTML pages into visually appealing websites. Now that we know what CSS is, it's time to delve into the basics. CSS or cascading style sheets is a language that allows us to style our web pages, making them more appealing and user-friendly. But how exactly does it work? Let's start with the syntax. CSS syntax is composed of three key components: selectors, properties, and values. Think of it as a command to your web page, telling it what to change and how to change it. First up, selectors. These are the HTML elements you want to style. They could be anything from a paragraph tag, a heading, a link, or even a specific ID or class. For instance, if you wanted to style all the paragraphs on your page, your selector would be the p tag. Next, properties. These are the aspects of the selected HTML element you want to change. They could be the color. Font size, background, border, and much more. So, if you wanted to change the text color of your paragraphs, your property would be color. Finally, values. These specify the changes you want to make to the property. If you wanted your paragraph text to be blue, your value would be blue. So, putting it all together, if you want to make all paragraph text blue, your CSS would look something like this: P P color blue. In this example. P is the selector, color is the property, and blue is the value. It's as simple as that. But remember, CSS isn't just about making your website look pretty. It's about improving the user experience, making your site accessible and easy to navigate. It's an essential tool for any web developer. With that in mind, don't be afraid to experiment with different selectors, properties, and values. The more you play around with CSS. The better you'll understand it, and the more effective your web design will be. Understanding CSS syntax is the first step towards mastering the art of web design. So keep practicing, keep experimenting, and most importantly, have fun with it. CSS selectors play a crucial role in applying styles to HTML elements, but how do they work? Well, they act like a spotlight, shining on the specific parts of your HTML document. That you want to style. There are several types of CSS selectors, each with its own special function. First up, we have element selectors. As the name suggests, element selectors target HTML elements. For instance, if you want to apply a style to all the paragraph elements in your HTML document, you would use the P selector. This would look something like P color blue, turning all your paragraphs a lovely shade of blue. Next, we have class selectors. These are a little more specific and allow you to apply styles to elements with a particular class attribute. To use a class selector, 
you'll need to precede the class name with a dot. For example, intro font size large will make the text of all elements with the class intro larger. Remember, class selectors are great when you want to style a group of elements that aren't necessarily the same type. Then we have ID selectors. These are the most specific of all, targeting a single unique element with a specific ID. To use an ID selector, precede the ID name with a hash symbol. For example, I hash first, text align center. We'll center the text of the element with the ID first. Use ID selectors sparingly as they are intended for unique elements. But that's not all folks. There are also compound selectors, pseudo class selectors and attribute selectors each offering their own unique ways of selecting elements. But we'll dive into those another time. In essence, CSS selectors are your tools for pinpointing exactly where you want your styles to go. They offer a level of precision and control that is crucial when designing a web page. So, don't shy away from them. Embrace them. Experiment with them. Mastering CSS selectors is key to applying styles effectively. And remember, practice makes perfect. So. Keep practicing and you'll soon be a CSS selector whiz. The CSS box model forms the foundation of layout design in CSS. But what is it? Picture in your mind a box. This isn't any ordinary box, but a magic box that can change its size, shape and position. This is the essence of the CSS box model. It's a box that encompasses all HTML elements on a web page. And it's what we use to define how those elements interact with each other and the space around them. At the heart of this box is the content, the text, images, videos, or other media that you want to display on your web page. This is the core of your HTML element and it's surrounded by several layers that give it structure and space. The first layer around the content is the padding. This is akin to the bubble wrap you might use when packing a precious item for shipping. It provides space between the content and the border of the box, giving your content some breathing room. Next comes the border, the actual outline of the box. This can be styled in various ways with CSS to be solid, dashed, or dotted, and can have different colors and thicknesses. It's like the cardboard of a shipping box. It provides structure. The final layer is the margin. This is the space around the outside of the border. It separates the box from other elements on the page. Think of it as the personal space of your HTML element. These four parts, the content, padding, border and margin, interact to create the layout of your web page. By manipulating these parts with CSS, you can precisely control the positioning, spacing and overall look and feel of your page. You can make elements bigger or smaller, move them around, stack them on top of each other and much more. So next time you're designing a web page, remember this magical box. Use it to your advantage and you'll find that even complex layouts become easier to handle. The CSS box model is instrumental in creating complex layouts. Ready to take your CSS skills to the next level? Let's dive into some advanced concepts. First off, we have CSS positioning. Positioning elements in CSS can sometimes feel like trying to solve a complex puzzle. But fear not, it's simpler than you think. There are five types of positioning. Static, relative, absolute, fixed and sticky. Static is the default position. Relative positions an element relative to its normal position. Absolute positions an element relative to the nearest positioned ancestor. Fixed positioning is relative to the viewport. And sticky, well, it's a hybrid of relative and fixed. Next up, we have pseudo classes. They are used to define a special state of an element. For example, you might use the hover pseudo class to change the color of a button when the user's cursor hovers over it. There are many pseudo classes like first child, last child, and nth child. These can target specific elements based on their position in the DOM or their state. Lastly, let's talk about media queries. They're a key ingredient in responsive web design. Media queries allow you to apply CSS rules based on factors such as screen width, device orientation, and resolution. For instance, you could have a CSS rule that changes the layout of your website when viewed on a screen that is less than 600 pixels wide. This is how you make your website responsive and adaptable to different screen sizes. 
To wrap it all up, CSS positioning helps you arrange elements on your page. Pseudo classes allow you to style elements based on their state or position, and media queries enable your website to adapt to different viewing environments. These concepts are your tools, your paintbrushes if you will, to create truly interactive and responsive websites. The more you practice, the more you'll understand how these tools work together, and the more impressive your websites will become. With these advanced CSS concepts, you can create truly dynamic websites. We've covered a lot of ground today from the basics of CSS to some advanced concepts. We kick things off by delving into the essence of CSS, its fundamental syntax, and how it's used to style HTML elements. This provided a strong foundation for our exploration into CSS selectors, where we learned how to target specific elements, classes, and IDs with precision and flair. Then, we journeyed into the realm of the CSS box model, understanding how margins, borders, padding, and content interact to determine the layout of your web page. We also took a deep dive into advanced CSS concepts, where we discussed techniques like pseudo-classes, animations, and responsive design. Each of these areas plays a critical role in how you design and build your websites. They're the tools in your developer toolkit, ready to be wielded in the creation of stunning, user-friendly interfaces. Remember, mastering CSS takes practice. So start experimenting and create your own stylish websites. Until next time, keep coding.